Now I've got a fun tie for you today with a really clever name. Super simple to tie, but it's a fish catcher. Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So this fly I'm about to tie comes to us from the Thoreau family up in Stacyville, Maine. Alvin Thoreau, his wife Connie, their daughter Holly. Now they run a fly shop up on their farm in Maine. Alvin has been tying since he was 12 and been raising chickens for fly tie materials since he was about 15. His wife Connie also ties commercially. And get this, their daughter Holly started tying when she was four. And according to their website, she is the one who has been tying this pattern for their customers for many years. This one is called maple syrup. Now about this fly, I found it in David Klausmeyer's 101 Favorite Nymphs and Wet Flies, and he's got it listed in here under the Stillwater Flies. And most of what I've read about this pattern is it's really popular up in New England in June and July when the Hexagenium mayflies are hatching. But I did also see some sources say that it, it works a lot later in the season than that, and it's not just a Stillwater fly. You can use this in, in rivers as well. So it's a really cool pattern, and I love the name, the maple syrup. I will link to their website in the description, so check it out if you get a second. And I would love to hear if any of you folks out there tie this and fish it in your home waters out west or down south, but I think this fly, it'll do pretty well for trout anywhere. So again, it's a really simple pattern with a pretty cool name. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a maple syrup, pretty much a staple for Maine fly fishing. Now. I've seen the recipes on this one as big as a 10 and as small as an 18, but it's definitely calls for a 3X or 4X long hook. So there's a, a little bit of a dilemma you have right there. And I'm gonna use some red 70 denier thread. But the dilemma is if you wanted to tie this in an 18, well, you're not gonna find a streamer hook as small as an 18. If you wanted to tie it as big as a 10 or 12, you can certainly find a nymph hook, but you're probably not gonna find many 3X or 4X long nymph hooks. So my answer there is just do the best you can um, with your hook choice. This is a 3X long streamer hook in a size 10. Now, the first thing we're gonna tie on after we caught that um, thread back to the bend of the hook is just some yellow kip tail. Uh, this is a uh, calf tail, same thing. Just a small tuft of it, not a huge, huge clump. So that right there, that might be a little bit more than I want, but I can pull out some of the super long fibers. And in the end, I might end up trimming it anyway, which I don't always do for the tips of fur or feathers, but in this case, we just might. So get a length about a hook gap. I'm gonna catch it in with a pinch wrap. You could catch it in with loose wraps. You'd wanna start it, uh, have it leaning over toward your side of the hook, so the first tight wraps might spin it on top. So there we go, that's, that's on top well enough. I'm gonna take a couple of extra wraps back. That's the tail I want. Now what I'm gonna do, and I'll tell you why, I'm gonna leave this in to make part of an underbody because I don't have the exact size chenille that I want. We'll get to that in a second. So how we do this, just loose wraps right here. Um, not tight because then it would flare or start spinning around, but I'm pretty much doubling the size of my my underbody just by leaving this in right here. Now we'll take it almost all the way up to the top. Now we've got a little bit of mess to, to trim, so a couple of tight wraps right there. Now let's just get in here and trim this so our head will be a little bit neater when we get to it. Okay, that took me a little longer than I would have liked, but just go ahead and bury this in. All right, now what I was talking about here is, well, let's go ahead and put a few tight wraps down. Those were just loose. Now we've got a, a pretty tight, but still thick underbody. So the few recipes I've seen for this called for, it's a tan, a medium chenille, and this is what I've got, it's labeled a medium but I tied a couple of these and that was just a little bit too thick for it. So I'm thinking a smaller chenille would be better, but I didn't have a small in this color. I had uh, an extra small. So that right there is gonna be just a little bit too thin. So what you can do if you find yourself in a situation like this, just we're gonna put a few wraps or a few layers of this down. 
Okay, so I caught it in up the front, and I'm just gonna take some open wraps going back, not too tight, right here to where I'm going to start wrapping it. Take my thread back up front. Now just lay it up here again, and then catch it in, maybe on my side this time. Doesn't really matter there. Couple of wraps. Now I'm gonna fold it back again, and more open wraps right here. Okay, so what I've effectively done there is just created a thicker underbody with about three layers of this chenille. Let's take our thread back up to the front, just pretty close behind the eye. Um, don't be afraid to wrap the chenille almost all the way up to the eye. So now just wrap it up. And you should have a, a body that, with the, the thickness that you pretty much want. Okay, get it up to the eye, catch it off, and we'll take a look at this body. Is this the, the thickness that we want? Uh, yeah, I think that's decent proportions right there. It's definitely thinner than that medium chenille would have been, and a little bit thicker than if I would have just used one layer of this small chenille. So take your thread right back behind the eye, and the red head is part of the fly, according to Klaus Meyer's tying instructions. Now I've seen it without red thread, but you know, I kind of like the red. It gives it just a, a hint of a hot spot. So build this up as big as you want. I'm just trying to cover all that, that chenille right there. And I'm not doing a very good job. I see a little bit of white sticking through, but you know what, I'm not worried about it. Make it as big as you want. And then a whip finish, a drop of head cement. Now let's take, we'll take a look at that tail in just a second, see if we need to do anything to it. So there's a four turn whip finish right there. Just gonna put my scissors through and poke them. Okay, now how's our tail look? Um, that's okay, it could be a little bit shorter. And if you want it shorter, don't be afraid to just snip off the tips of, of a fly like this. Um, you, the tail isn't gonna have a whole lot of movement in the water anyway, so I think we can get away with that right there. So some UV resin or head cement on the front of this, and you're good to go. The maple syrup. Pretty nifty little pattern, super easy to tie. Appreciate you watching, folks. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.